Let's take a look at this. Jesus Christ girls have been our topic within the local community considering the strong record against the world's best teams. Many have wondered why they weren't able to get results. We sat with Mickey X to ask about a number of things to try and understand what got lost in translation at Worlds 2023. At the start of the very first League of Legends season, the Western team has never won world title. Fans have already seen LCS teams have kind of accepted that there's a good chance they'll never win worlds, though due to that team is the team that has come closest. Alright, let's have a read. However, while that practice appears to have paid off through most of the year, G2 floundered at both MSI and Worlds in 2023. Though Mickey X felt that they had improved since MSI, it wasn't enough. I, I think that they improved a lot since MSI. I think I can tell you with a person, from, from a point of view of like someone that knows the game, they did improve a lot when it came after MSI. I feel it were pretty decent when we came in. I think we had good plans. We executed them pretty well. The first two games were pretty promising. This I disagree with. I think that the first two games weren't as promising. I think the result blinded a lot of, a lot of people. I think the first down one game, it's like... I, I reference to, to two things. It's like the, the, in the game, the game was very contentious in terms of how it played out. And at the same time, they got draft scenarios that they were never allowed to get ever again. So they had Oriana, Draven, Maokai in one game. And then additionally, they had, of course, Zaya, Rakan, Oriana in a different case, uh, which is insanity. I think early games went well for us. I think it's true. I think bot lane wise, I think they did good. Uh, then we threw at Nash, of course, but at least we had a little hope that we can't like, because of the MSI, something felt like we just couldn't win from laning phase before 14 minutes. We were just losing plates. We were losing on the map 14 minutes and the enemy already was, has objective bounties and it was hard. Nowadays, at least first two games of Worlds, we were actually winning. Oh, that's fair. I think that's fair. This renewed confidence in Jesus' ability to command the lead early on may be a part of why this can result was so good. And although Mickey X felt the team had some highs this year, each loss of Worlds weighed heavily on his mind. He spoke of what he thought went wrong against each opponent they lost to at Worlds 2023 following the strong opening against D plus Kia and Weibo. Genji won. I think that one was winnable. I just think that they played much better. And we also had some blunders in draft. Definitely. It's like they gave Zyra Khan over uh, twice and strong Silas angle and then the Jackson 5, like Genji was way better prepared. I think even after a week we couldn't really fix our priorities. Not priorities, but there are some champions that we just couldn't play. This confirms everything, right, so that we saw from outside. Didn't want to play Zyra Khan, didn't want to play Javan, didn't play Rumble. Um, there's more, uh, Caitlyn, right, Ash. Um, there's definitely more, right? But that's what comes to mind right away. So that was definitely a challenge we had to overcome. And we couldn't. Just in general, we just played way, way worse than we were capable of. Vi, Wukong, they are like less important, I'd say, than the ones that I mentioned. So that's why like it's a very disappointing end to this tournament, because I really felt like we could go all the way, especially against our NRG. They played really well, right? But I felt like we were just breaking our hands and not thinking about the game at all. I think that's true too. Um, I think that both sent. I think both both things can be true, right? It's not like why did NRG win? Well, they did play well, yeah, they did play well, but also G two played quite poorly. I'm not sure. Just a completely off day, and then today Billy Billy just played better on a fundamental level. I think they were just better about moving around the map, doing stuff. When they got a lead, they were pretty good at closing it out. Billy Billy is a tough team to beat. There's no shame in losing against Billy Billy. Really not. Uh, Billy Billy is like a top four team at the tournament and there's no shame in this at all, right? Mickey details some of the issues he perceived in the drafting, for instance. He broke down game one against Billy on Billy Billy and how On caught him off guard with the million pick and they didn't ban Jax away from Bin. This was sad, you know? Like, this is sad because someone that doesn't scrim, didn't scrim against Billy Billy. Me from the outside, I caught this instantly, you know, in Champion Select. I caught the million. I also caught the fact that you shouldn't give over Jax, you know? The Kogma Braum was basically like against Zaya, you want to play to Outranger. And I think with Kogma Braum and Malkai, they can't really do much together. And they also picked Sejuani, which also wasn't very good into those three champions. I think the blunder that was not to get rid of Jax because we knew they were going to pick Jax, right? And Kogma Braum was not really good into that. Jax is very good against Braum. He is basically, basically a counter, right? It's like Jax E counters Kogma Brom, right? It's like he blocks a significant portion of Kogma's W uptime and also the Brom passive. 
So Jax is really good into Kogma Brom. Even in my video, right, when I uh, like in, in the in the co-stream where I make the draft, I my bands are basically like I think I banned Azir instead of Nico. I think Nico would have been better. Nico, Jax, Zaya should have been the bands on, 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 on Blue Side, I think. And then we were talking about banning Milio on 4-5. A bit unlikely that he actually plays it. He usually plays engaged champs, which is true. But then again, you think of On at MSI and he picked the Lulu, right? And he dove T1 over and over again. On is just a very, very solid player uh, when it comes down to it. So yeah, we could avoid those situations. Nothing other than that. Very true. But sometimes she happens, right? Mickey felt that his performance just got worse over the course of the event, despite having a pretty strong off showing on off meta picks like the Sandra counter for a gamma in game two and a strong early game with Bard in game three. He was wholly unsatisfied with his performance despite his MVP worthy domestic year. I would say I think I was just doing fine going in, like the Damon Weibo game, I was winning. I think the Genji game I was doing okay. Uh, NRG game I was inting. Yeah, he was definitely inting. You know? Definitely inting at um like by his standard, you know. Definitely seen worse supports at Worlds, but he definitely didn't have a good game, right? A series. So why didn't those scrims those show up on stage? I think we just, I don't know what it is. I guess enemy teams also play way different. So they don't take as many risks as in scrims. In scrims, we punish those risks way more. But I think we played more scared. I think we just over-respected our opponents on stage, maybe. Practice is a fickle thing. When it comes to League of Legends pro play, and every team is, some, is different. Some teams will choose to try and refine new strategies they're cooking in scrims with other teams, while some play safe and focus on refining a place that already works for them. Against NRG, they played really aggressive, no regrets, and we were just waiting for them to do whatever they want, you know? It was really important to play aggressive and be decisive in your engage in your play, which we were, weren't really doing that. They can have it for this year, they're better, like fair enough, NRG was actually really good, I was surprised, all the players played well. Any other day I think we still win, but they got us, got us on an off day. Sucks. We'll, we'll get them back the next year. I think Mickey said as much as he could and I, I it might make people annoyed and maybe it coming from me uh, will make people annoyed but I still think that G2 was by far the best Western team the entire year and um, during the span of that day against NRG NRG played super well had better prep G2 played poorly and had worse prep and that sometimes happens on the day that sometimes happens on the day and that's the part that's a volatile part of um, of competition, you know. Sometimes it just happens, and I don't I don't think that takes away from what G two was this entire year and the accurate predictions coming into it. Because while the result might differ, I think everything pointed to G two being the favorite, and I think that uh, in a rematch, I wouldn't be so quick to say that NRG would win. I would say that G two is favored in the rematch. So while they won on the day, and NRG deserve props for that. And then IG walk away with, you know, the pride of the region on their shoulders, rightfully so. I don't think that um, at the end of the day that G2 is a worse team than NRG, just because they lost on the day. Let's check some Reddit comments. They didn't ban Jax when it was a clear counter for the cone, they were turning to force. And then they didn't ban Melio because of YOLO. They get flustered whenever an opponent doesn't play as predicted and start spiraling. I don't really see how they get this. Like, how on earth does he get this from this interview? This is a whole lot of, like, filling in blanks. Giga, giga filling in blanks. They somehow cannot play the meta champs. Do the players just learn champions when they feel like it? Is there no incentive for players to get better? How Scream comes prepared just a round table when players name champions they enjoy? Yeah, this is, this is fair. This is fair, right? Like, them missing the mark on certain champions could be a variety of things. They somehow have no priority pick. Not only do they only play meta champions, but they also have a single champion that we're actually a threat if we get this. What are they talking about? Like Maokai, Draven, Kalista, Oriana. Like these are champs that they have had success on and really like playing. Reddit is um, it's a strange place, man.